to another edition of Cheers to Careers. I am Steve Ridinghouse, the Career Outreach Coordinator at the School of Journalism and Mass Communications at KU. Hello and welcome to another edition of Cheers to Careers. I am Steve Ridinghouse, the Career and Outreach Coordinator for the KU School of Journalism and Mass Communications. Welcome, Gene. King, how are you? I'm doing great, Steve. Thanks, uh, thanks for having me and good to see you again. Yeah, it's been a while. I know we went to school at the same time and yeah. um, you've had quite the career path. And right now, I think you're in what, Fort Mill, South Carolina? Fort Mill, South Carolina, yeah. It's like a little suburb um, just south of Charlotte, North Carolina. And your role, you're the head of communications and analyst relations at CompuCom. Um, how long have you been in that position? Uh, it's going on uh, about a year and a half now, going on two years here for us. So what is kind of a typical day? There probably isn't a typical day, or what What are your expectations with this job? Yeah, so so as, as you know, even in daily newspaper life, there's never a typical day. You same thing with Tom's and PR uh, stuff. So I, I am in charge of all of our external communications, so that's be relations, some social, corporate communications, as well as internal communications. Uh, and then the analyst relations is we work with a lot of the analysts and advisors within the industry. So a typical day is I'm probably wearing every hat during the day, right? Um, literally, we have a, a town hall coming up this week where all 6,500 associates will be um, virtually going, you know, talking to all the the, uh, the executive leaders and things. So I'm have to work and set all that up. Um, we've got a few other things that we're working on from a social media standpoint. And actually, I'm working um, this week to do a few briefings with advisors on some of our new products and solutions. So just getting all that ready for the week as well. So no, no typical day, but it's all it's all fun. You talk about the town hall. What's going to be your primary role? Are you going to serve as a moderator? Or are you just pretty much setting everything up? Or what? what is your role for that? Yeah, so a little bit of both. So I'll, I'll set it all up. I'll set the agenda, kind of the main message. We want to make sure we're communicating to all of our associates. Again, we do obviously do them every quarter. So we want to, you know, weave to a story together throughout the year. Um, and then I'll moderate it from there. I'll kick things off, turn it over to our CEO uh, as well. And then we'll have them. We have um, you know, country leads here in the U.S. and Canada will speak. Um, we have a large operations in Mexico and India as well. So we'll probably have them give some updates. Uh, and then we get, now we're going into the fourth quarter. We like to call it our season of service. So we have a big culture about doing the right thing and always have fun doing it and things. So we've actually got a pretty big initiative at the end of the year um, that we wrap around our CompuCom Cares. Um, so it's a lot of what we're doing from a philanthropic standpoint. So we'll talk about some of the things we have on the fourth quarter going on. Um, we're working with the Salvation Army, Toys for Tots, um, and various things as well. So we'll talk about that and set that up for the fourth quarter. Wow, fascinating. Yeah, a lot of moving parts. Yeah, I love your LinkedIn profile. You do a great job of keeping that updated. And um, I love like your About Me, where you talk about yeah. Global Communications Pro, Content Marketer, Brand Journalist. So how do you do all that? How do you find that balance? <laughs> well, it, it, it's really the nice thing is not even about the balance, because to me, it, it all works together, right? So you, you take the Brand Journalist um, standpoint, like, you know, I'm always going to tell our story and tell it appropriately, tell it with facts, just like a regular journalist would, because um, I think that's important as you tell your story uh, as well. But in that content marketing standpoint, uh, again, you're, you're trying to evoke some kind of behavior and what you're doing is getting call to actions. What you're trying to do with your content is to drive some kind of behavior um, with your with your audience down the, down the, you know, the customer hierarchy, the customer funnel, if you will, um, as well. So to me, it, it all actually works together. Um, so that's why I think it's kind of all those things. Uh, as well, so. And it seems like throughout your career, and I think you've got some messaging on your LinkedIn profile about this, you talk about the science of marketing with the art of communication. Has that been kind of the foundation for most of your work throughout your career? Yeah, it really has. Um, so once I kind of, you know, got into the marketing side and talked a little bit about um, getting my master's to KU with the integrated marketing communication, which I was like the third group in. So it was early on in all this as well, but it was something that really gave me a great foundation and something we really talked about hard there was just the measurement. Um, and I think that's where the science of marketing comes in, is you can be measuring pretty much everything you're doing uh, as well. And now that, you know, again, I'm on the PR side and Tom's as well, is it really turned over and tripled over into that aspect to where we're really measuring Tom's, right? We're really measuring PR. And I think that's a that's something that kind of has been uh, not new within the PR industry, but something that has become much more of a focus, right? You've got to show your value. You've got to be able to show some business outcomes. So that's always been something that's kind of tied together to where if I'm going to do it, I want to figure out how I'm going to measure this because I need to have a success out of it. So I want to know what's my end game, what's my objective for this, and that, how we're going to accomplish it. So really that science of marketing to me and the art of communications is there's an art to how you want to communicate it, but there's certainly a science. Who's the audience? Um, what channels are you going to use? All these things are all measurable and you can figure it out and you can test it. So that's where that kind of the science really kind of comes in. 
And I think the combination of the two is really kind of what makes it both very powerful. And I know you do some advising of uh, senior executives. Mm -hmm. What kind of science and arts involved in that? I would think that takes some skill. It, 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 it takes a lot of skill. Um, I kind of like to say, and, and probably, uh, you know, get a colleague throughout my years of, of doing this as well, kind of coined this, that, you know, comms, communications, PR, if you will, um, is really kind of conscious of the brand. Um, so I kind of like the fact that, again, we've got the pulse on everything that's going on within the industry. We know what's going on in the street. We know what's going on, you know, politically in any environment. And it's our job to counsel senior executives on how this, whatever message we've got, will be taken from the associates, maybe taken externally, um, taken from, by the street for publicly traded companies. It's kind of our role to be that conscious, if you will, conscious of the of the corporation, sort of kind of set up the message and deliver that um, holistically. Because again, you're going to have a lot of different audiences, a lot of different stakeholders. So when I go into that, it, again, part of what I want to do is give them the whole picture of what's going on and have no matter what we decide to do, what we decide to say, is this how it can be perceived? Here's how we want to set ourselves up. So it's really kind of your, your steward of the brand in that standpoint. So when I'm counseling senior executives, I really take that, um, that real seriously. It's like, you know, I'm the steward of the brand. What's this going to look like and what's this going to sound like as we're communicating externally as well as internally. Were you always confident advising senior executives or did that take some time? I mean, I would yeah. think that'd be a little nerve wracking at first, but once you have that credibility build up, you yeah. probably became pretty natural for you. It, it, it took some time, but I do think my, my journalism background, um, you know, working as a, a daily newspaper reporter helps you with that. Um, you know, it, it, as, as you know, sports writer for the first several years um, as well. So, you know, you're talking to coaches after games that are pretty hot, pretty heated, if it's a loss, right? So there's a tact that you have when you're interviewing people. Very similar when you're working with um, C-level executives as well, as well, is that, again, you've got to understand what they're trying to accomplish as well. They're, they're really into facts, right? So go to them. You don't need to have a 20 minute meeting, give them the five, 10 minute version of it, let them make decisions, things like that. So it's, so it's something I think I learned even early on, you know, as a reporter that, you, you know, I need to help get the story out. Um, I need to be able to tell the story, but also then how you're asking questions um, as well and, and having some tact um, and some delicacy when you're actually delivering some of those lines that you want to have uh, as well. It certainly helps. So I do think it kind of set me up for success. But it does take some time, right, to, to understand um, their needs, because even each executive is different um, as well, what is gonna, they're going to need and they're going to want uh, as well. So that, that's just like working with anybody. Um, you know, you've got to have that balance of knowing what it is you're trying to do, but also understanding um, how they're working and how they're going to react to things. I know you've referenced uh, newspaper, sports writing, yeah. um, transferable skills. That's a big thing we take pride in here at KU. Yeah. What kind of skills have been able to really sustain you throughout your career? Yeah, I, I think the biggest one, and, and I harp on this a lot, even with you know, my teams and others, and I think this is where the um, journalism school, KU, has done us all well, is just the writing aspect. Um, I, I think, again, just no AP style, but just writing, and we wrote a lot, and we're writing a lot, um, and just being able to write tight. I even, you know, again, kind of counsel my team still today, you know, is, again, write tight. Um, you know, again, the fewer the words, the better. Again, words can set the tone. I think that's something that I learned early on. Um, the newspaper side the, the KU journalism school as well is this you know the words that the tone there are power in your words and what you do and say it'll set a tone so just understand that and be in storytelling um, i think it's a huge thing that we that we learned um, at the j school is just how do you tell the story because um, that is really kind of what's going to help set you apart um, as well is being able to write type it and tell that story um, as you're going out through your, through your career for your for the companies you're working for You've referenced your team a few times. How big is your the team you work with? Yeah, so there's five or five now, or, or I can actually um, add a couple of people. I've got videographers, I've got writers, um, graphic designers as well, and then previously at other roles, um, similar size, seven to ten, or so. It's kind of what I've managed, and, and then they manage some people as well. So it's something that, um, again, having a sports writing background, I still you know look at it as a lot of times uh, you know in today's world, even in my level, you're still a player coach a lot. So I'm doing a lot of writing as well, right? I'm, I'm doing a lot of the plans. Um, I'm meeting with people. So it, it's something that, again, I think, you know, we all have kind of gotten to the level where it's, it's something where, you know, again, as a player coach, you're doing, but you also you got to coach people up and lead them as well. Um, and that's been a great part about um, my roles, you know, the last few roles as well as leading the people and seeing them grow in their careers too. How do you keep that team motivated? Oh, that's, that's a great question. Um, again, <laughs> I, I think challenging them still, um, Again, and giving them, giving them some um, abilities to 
create um, on their own. Again, this is still a creative field of what we do. Um, and everybody has a different style of how they create. That was something that was interesting during the master's program is we had a creative and innovation class. Um, and we all talked about just how everybody is different when it comes to innovation, everybody's different in their creative process. So that's something that uh, I find myself on throughout the career too, is you know, helping whoever um, is creating something, whether it's a video or a story or a graphic, is giving the right guidance, but then also letting them create, because again, we all create differently um, as well. So I think there's a lot of that as well, is keeping them motivated and providing some challenges, getting some stretch um, opportunities. Uh, we've got a videographer, this is his first real um, corporate job, if you will, he's not young in the industry, but this is his first um, corporate role. Uh, again, so in video is huge when, when it comes to the corporate side of things now and even the agency stuff where, so he had an opportunity to um, get some video, had some leaders down in Houston meeting with um, a large partner of ours. And again, just trusting him and letting him go down there on his own and setting things up and working with our executives. But you know, you're coaching, right? You say, are you comfortable? Are you ready? But then now he's gonna have so much more confidence now that he's done that on his own, that and I'm confident now in him to be able to interact with our, our C-suite on certain things too with the right guidance. So it's each little opportunity, he just continues to grow and our team continues to grow uh, with him as well. Now, do you get to do a little bit of script writing for the videos or what's your involvement with like, the video process? Yeah, so so again, kind of similar to the town, I'll, I'll set up all the main messaging, uh, mm -hmm. you know, do, do those, a lot of talking points, um, the bullet points and, and things as well, and then kind of give that to him to massage as he needs. Um, and then when he's on set or on site with our executives, they'll, they'll tweak and, and um, do some things there. But, uh, you know, I found, again, if you give him a good, a good script, good talking points, and, and the executives will nail those every time, um, if, if you will. So it's something like, again, as the, as the you know, again, harbinger of the message, um, if you will, for um, the company is I'm still providing the, the key talking points and the messaging for him. And then he'll execute on site and use that theme as well when he's shooting the video to understand what he needs to get within certain shots and different things too. I know you have a great message there over your shoulder, work hard yeah. and be nice to people. Is that kind of what you live by day to day? Yeah, and I can say, you know, when, when people see that, it, it's something that if I can do both of those in any one day, I've had a pretty good day, right? Um, so I, and it's, it's something that I do, I, you know, I work hard, I lo love what I do. Um, and I just kind of have to remember, but you can, you can work super hard, but if you're, you're feeling to be nice, uh, sometimes that works, you know, gonna, you know, overcome you and stuff too. So, um, something that I feel and take pride in that at the end of the day, look at my day, see what I've accomplished and go, okay, I, I was able to kind of did a lot of, did a lot of good work, but also, uh, you know, kind of, uh, you know, certainly was nice and professional and, and uplifting to people, right? That's part of our role too, is to kind of uplift people and keep them motivated as we talked earlier but make them feel like that they've had a good day as well. And I don't think I've asked this yet. Um, so you still own your own company. What's that like? Sky King, that's an awesome name, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> Sky King Marketing Communication. So the last name King, it has a clearly no. And, you know, you and I, Steve, are some of the age, probably a little too young, but our parents weren't, where um, Sky King was a, a pilot in, um, you know, I think Arizona or something uh, as well. So my, my dad was a fabulous basketball player and went into Air Force. So he became Sky King. So um, I'm like, I got, I love that name. So I'm still that um, as well. So yeah, Sky King Marketing Kids, been doing that for, you know, as long as I kind of been in the marketing side of things. Um, and the nice thing about that is, you know, I've, I've worked for larger companies like the HR Block, CompuCom, Allied, um, for your own larger budgets. So you're working with a lot, lot of, lot of, you know, larger things going on, but we, you know, some of them are consulting is you're working with smaller businesses or medium sized businesses. So maybe the budget's on as large. So you really have to get creative with what you're trying to do. Um, and it just kind of keeps you grounded as well, but also in touch with kind of what's going on within certain other industries. Um, so kind of I, I'm on the consulting side, do a lot of the PR, do a lot of planning um, as well, you know, writing marketing plans, setting up strategic plans as well, and then executing for them on the PR side um, is being great. Cause that's also then again, at, at the heart of who I am, I'm still that journalist, you know, I still love working with journalists um, as well. So I, it's something that I always kind of, you know, pride myself on it is, you know, taking what's that story and be able to tell that story and then have a media side, hey, that's a great story. Like, let's talk about that as well. And doing it through Sky King, I get to do it in a lot of different facets. And you talk about your time at H&R Block. So like yeah. when you kind of transition throughout your career, 
were you applying for jobs or did companies find you or how, how was that process like? Well, that's a good question. I've uh, kind of a little bit of both. Um, you know, something you always probably should have your resume fresh, uh, no matter where you are. Uh, but it, it's something that, uh, again, as we were moving on, um, again, out from the journalism side of things, right? So my first job was actually writing newsletters outside of journalism, uh, was writing newsletters for a company that was in, in the marketing. And then that's where kind of that marketing bug um, bit me and started to understand like, okay, yeah, I'm writing for an audience. Yeah, there's different um, objectives for my writing and different things. That's what really got me interested on the marketing side. So that was one that kind of I applied for and got, but then from there, it just kind of worked to work, moved on to Black and Veatch. Um, that role kind of came to me as an opportunity. So I'm like, how come I, how can I not take that? Um, super smart there. And then some of the other roles uh, as well. And then certainly I think HMO Block was one. So um, you know, a lot, knew a lot of people who'd already worked there. Um, as well. So that's kind of something they had no place to apply, but it was something to do through the network. So I think networking is huge. Um, that's the nice thing about LinkedIn. It's much easier to do that um, now than it was back when, when I was looking for jobs you know, many moons ago uh, as well. And then kind of what happened with um, you know, moving out here to the Carolinas is, you know, I'd been in Kansas City. Um, we were looking to kind of expand, see where we could go. And within the, you know, I always kind of been in the financial services um, arena. And Charlotte, for, for those of you who don't know, it, it's, it's home to multiple large national banks, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, Truist, Ally. Um, so it was a great place to come and still stay in the financial sector um, as well. So that was something that we looked for particular roles in the city that were in financial services. So again, that opening came up, um, applied to it, but also they were looking for me. They kind of contacted me and said, hey, you know, would you like to look at this as well? Knowing that you're looking in the city uh, as well. So. And Gene, I always like to close our interviews with our alums. Uh, what advice would you have for students? I know you've touched a lot with the networking, the writing, keep those skills up to date. Anything yeah. else you'd like to share with uh, our soon-to-be grads? Yeah, no, I'd love to. Yeah, I mean, again, I think you know, talk about write. Um, write as much as you can. Write for pleasure. Um, write for work. I mean, it, it's like anything. It's it's a muscle. You have to, to still um, work out. So, again, write, write, write as much as you can. But on the inverse side of that is read is also as well. Um, I think that's something, again, former journalists, I'm always reading the news, what's going on. But within your career, within your role, again, you are going to be asked for, hey, what should we do in this situation? What do you think we should be um, talking about right now? And that's going to come from just your knowledge of what's going on in the world. Um, so being able to read, again, multiple outlets, um, you know, don't get all your news from TikTok. Um, try, to, try to read as much as you can and get various opinions um, and, you know, from diff different demographics and different uh, people. So you can really kind of have a whole picture and a good view of, what is going on and then you can take that use that to understand now what the brand's doing or what this company's wanting to do um, or what i'm writing for the newspaper side just and then you've got some basis um to kind of grow from that so that's something i would again i encourage everybody write but also then read um because again that will give you power as you're going forward throughout your career gene hey i appreciate you sharing your experiences oh, my and pleasure. your advice and I, I always like to close with the toast i know you got yeah. a special uh, you don't have a mug, but you have something more yeah. resonant to my recognize little Johnny, so I like it. Yeah, I was gonna say I, I for some reason must have lost all my KU mugs in the uh, in the moves, but I did I did keep Johnny's tavern. You know. All so right. Well, Johnny, hey, Gene. Cheers to your career. Appreciate it. Hey, I appreciate you. Thanks, Steve. Rock job.